What's up, everybody? My name is Michael Eckert. I am a staff sergeant in the United States Marine Corps. I have been in for 10 years, and uh, it's made me think. It made me think about, like, why I joined the Marine Corps, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. I want to talk about why I joined the Marine Corps and uh, why I'm still in the Marine Corps. And, yeah, let's get into it. 2012, that's where my decision to join the Marine Corps really came to light. It was at the end of 2012. I was working waiting tables at First Watch. I was going to night classes at community college for mechanical engineering because I'm good at math. What I realized is I don't necessarily want to do math or mechanical engineering for the rest of my life. But I was like, I've been at school doing this 10-year plan for one and a half years, which is a lot of time. I've invested time and, and money into going to classes. So I was like, do I want to just walk away from that? How do I, how do I even step away from that? I've already told my family, my friends, everyone, I'm going to school for mechanical engineering. What do I do? Uh, because I've, I've realized now that I don't want to do it anymore. Um, plus I didn't want to waste a lot of time that I've already spent into going towards that degree. So I was like, how do I take a step back while also taking a step forward? And I remember my dad joined the army as a captain. Well, he got out as a captain, but he joined the army and uh, he went enlisted first and became an officer. So he had some know-how and or knowledge of the military. My brother joined the army as well and he became an infantryman. So I went up to my dad and I was like, hey dad, I'm considering joining the military. And so I was, I was looking at all the other branches and whatnot and uh, Air Force didn't appeal to me. Uh, it, it, and it's just all personal. Like I wanted, I'll start, I'll just say what did appeal to me, which was physically challenging, demanding, like get punched in the face. I'm ready for a change in my life. I feel like I've been at a standstill for so long and I've wasted this time. I need, I need to get like my ass kicked. And obviously <laughs> the Marine Corps was the best option for that. I, I, I did try the army route. I talked to some army recruiters. It just didn't appeal to me. It didn't grab me. And uh, so I, I went to my dad and I was like, hey, do you mind going to a Marine Corps recruiter with me? And at that time, my, my dad and I's relationship was a little rocky because I was living at home. Uh, him and I were around each other a lot. And it was just real tense because like I didn't really have a plan with what I was doing. And he's more of he's very fatherly as in son, you got to have a plan. And I didn't have a plan. So we were always kind of like there was a lot of friction between us. But when I said, hey, dad, would you please go to the recruiter with me? I would like to talk to a Marine Corps recruiter. Didn't matter what branch. My dad was like, yes, 100 percent. I'll go with you. Super excited about your, you considering this. And so he went to the Marine Corps. And I was also like, my dad will get me a good deal because my dad, you know, you know, the dad stuff where he's like, you know, take your dad with you because your dad knows best. You don't want to admit that he does, but you want to have him there, especially like when you're buying a car or something. I wanted him there when I was joining or talking to a recruiter. I was like, he's, he's going to get me a good deal. And uh, so <laughs> we went to the recruiting office and we talked to uh, uh, my recruiter at the time, was Sergeant Mears. And we sat down, they put some little cards in front of you and say, what do you want to do? What do you want to get out of the military? Blah, 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 a little recruiting spiel. And it's all cool stuff. I mean, uh, go check it out at your local recruiter. <laughs> but uh, they put the tiles in front of you. One says travel, one says networking. And I think there's like 10 of them. And he says, choose four. These are your top ones. And I chose a couple of them. Travel was definitely one of them. And networking was definitely one of them. That's why I remember those. Uh, and I didn't sign anything that first day going in. I was super excited, but I you like, you know, I, you, know, you always walk away from the first offer. Right. And so, especially with my dad there, I was like, yeah, dad, fist bump. We're, uh, we're not taking this first offer which is like, I don't know, some MOS I've never heard of before. And uh, whatever. Whatever the case was, I didn't sign anything. But I did get put into the delayed entry program, which was a, uh, if you don't know what that is, it's like a preparatory phase for boot camp uh, where they kind of like mold you into uh, what they want you to look like for the Marine Corps before you go because they want to make sure you, you know, your knees are good, all everything's working because they don't want you to drop out and fail a boot camp, which is understandable. So some people are in the debt program for like one to two years. However the case is, it's more of like a, a holding phase to train you and help you get prepared for the Marine Corps. And I think you can get paid in it too. But uh, yeah, I, I did walk away with the contract, but I walked away in the delayed entry program. So I was in that program. You go PT like twice a week or something like that. And the next time I went and talked to my recruiter, 
uh, I signed a contract for 3521 MOS, which was a motor transport mechanic. Because I wanted to weld, but there was no welding MOSs open like for the foreseeable future. Uh, and so mechanics, because I wanted to get a trade skill. I know I'm all over the place here. The reason I wanted to get a trade skill is because my brother joined the infantry in the army, which respect to all you grunts out there, but he's the one who actually talked me out of joining the the infantry because he goes, it's very difficult to get, uh, he just didn't feel like he, he got, a, this is my brother speaking, uh, that he got away with uh, any real usable skill besides shooting guns, which is awesome, but it's also, he was like, you know, now that I'm in the civilian world, because he got out after three, and uh, he was just like, it's, it's really hard to transition what you learned, what you dedicated those three years to into the, the civilian world. Understandable, unless you're like a security guard, which is actually what he does now. He's a security guard. And so, you know, it works out. But uh, he's the reason I didn't go infantry because I wanted to get a trade skill. And so uh, I was talking to my dad and we figured it out and I got... Uh, the mechanic MOS, motor transport mechanic, and that's what I was going in as. And uh, then at the delayed entry program, like weekend event, where you do an initial strength test, which is half of a, a physical fitness test. Physical fitness test is three miles, two minutes of sit-ups, two minute, or as many pull-ups as you can do. And uh, it's just to see like where you're at. Um, the IST is, sorry. The physical fitness test is the standardized test for the Marine Corps. The initial strength test is half of that. Well, it's the only thing that's half is the run, but it's a mile and a half run, sit-ups and pull-ups. And uh, it's based, yeah, it's half of a PFT, and it's what they do in the delayed entry program to see if you're ready to take on the full physical fitness test, which is what you do during boot camp. You do more during boot camp, but, like, that's the test. You have to pass that test in order to pass boot camp. And so... Uh, I was in the delayed entry program for probably three days before we took this test, and I did so well on it. They thought they had, like, a typo because I did 40 pull-ups, right? And I think pull-ups are, like, the number one thing that people struggle on. And uh, I remember, uh, this is a little side story to this story, uh, I was standing at the uh, the line to do pull-ups, and I had... I hadn't been there before. And to get all these people that have been in there for like a year, year and a half, they're super experienced on how to report in. And I'm looking at the line of people. You're standing underneath the pull-up bar. Your recruiters at the time are, you know, mock drill instructors being like yelling at you, mount the bar, that sort of stuff. And you're supposed to go up to the bar and you're supposed to say, this is what you're supposed to say. You're supposed to go, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, permission to mount the bar, sir. And then he goes, mount my bar. And then you go, begin after you mount the bar, which is just getting on the pull-up bar. And I didn't know that, but I was like super nervous and I was trying to figure out how to mount the pull-up bar properly or request permission because nobody freaking told me. It was just one of those adapt situations and, and make sure you're doing it correctly. And uh, so I asked the guy in front of me, I was like, what am I supposed to say? And he goes, you're supposed to get up there and say blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, I think I can remember that. And like nerves are hitting me and everything's going. And uh, I get up to the bar and I just remember saying like loud at the top of my lungs because he's like, make sure you say it loud. I was like, okay. I said, good afternoon, sir. Pooley Ecker, request permission to mount your pole, sir. And uh, I just remember, because looking back, it's funny, because the recruiters were, you know, mock drill instructors or whatnot. They go, holy shit, Christmas came early. Go ahead and mount my pole, son. And I was like, uh, okay, I don't think I said that right. but And, oh, man. Looking back, I was like, that's one of the funniest moments that I had uh, <laughs> transitioning into the military. Uh, just because, you know, you're screaming at the top of your lungs and you mess it up so bad and you ask permission to mount some dude's pole. I mean, is what it is. But you brush it off. And I slammed out 40 pull-ups and it shut everyone up right off the bat. And they were like, holy shit, this guy's a beast. And so I was like, okay, well, uh, where do I sign? <laughs> because when I got back to the office, um, the district recruiting person, whatever you call it, the highest in chain of command was like, no, 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 he didn't do 40 pull-ups. No, not this guy. And, uh, cause I was like a buck 40 or something like that. Super skinny, but I could do a lot of pull-ups and, uh, because I've been rock climbing and they're like, no, 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 it's true. And so I actually was in the delayed entry program for two weeks before shipping to boot camp. And, uh, originally they were like, yeah, nothing's going to open up for like six months. Sorry, man. It's too bad. 
uh, you're just going to have to be with us in the delayed entry program for six months. And I was like, you know, it is what it is. I'll do it. I'll PT. I'll learn all the ranks and blah, blah, blah. We got plenty of time. Two weeks later, I'm off to boot camp, and uh, that's what happened. Because I did so well on the initial strength test, I bumped so many people out of the way. Because the, the idea of the initial strength test is, again, to make sure you're ready to join the Marine Corps and make sure you're ready to pass boot camp. I think that's the number one thing. Not Boot camp will sculpt you into uh, being able to adapt in the Marine Corps, but the initial strength test is to make sure you can physically pass boot camp. And uh, once they weren't worried about me because of the delayed entry program is supposed to design to like sculpt you into a, you know, semi physically fit person. And then, Hey, go on to boot camp and good luck. Uh, but they had no doubts with sending me. So uh, yeah, I joined two weeks after being in the depth and I heard of some of the kids that are in there. And I mean, it's some of the kids that are, you know, okay, I can see why they're, they're keeping this guy here because uh, he needs a little work, but uh, it, it, um, it was awesome. It was awesome. And that's the reason I joined the Marine Corps because uh, uh, I wanted a, physically, a physical challenge and um, I wanted to uh, uh, take a step back while also taking a step forward. It wasn't necessarily like uh, any particular one reason. Like I wasn't like, I need to carry on my family's flag legacy so I can, you know, follow in their footsteps and, and join the, the military it wasn't anything like that. It was just, I needed a way to take a step back. And this was a, a real way to do that because it's the military, the Marine Corps, especially, cause I, I can't speak for all branches, but I can speak a little bit about the army cause my brother and my dad's experience, but the military for the most part is, is simple. It's not easy, but it's very simple. You wake up at a certain time because you're told to do it. You're told to do everything. You're given a schedule. You're given people to hold you accountable to that schedule because Telling you right now, go to the fleet and miss morning PT one time. See how many people show up banging on your door to get you up if your roommates left you there. Yeah. Uh, I, so there are people to hold you accountable, and it, it's very simple. Like, it's just you don't have to think very much. And that's one of the things I wish I had known joining the Marine Corps, joining the military, because it's so simple I could have had like a side hobby on, on, on the side. I could have been dedicating my life, to, especially now, like social media. Uh, if you do it in a, a good professional way, you don't just like, you know, uh, I don't think you can have only fans in the Marine Corps, but, uh, yeah, you just, you, you, you provide value in your own way and you create a business around it. I think that that's one of the best things you can do. Don't look like a total like D bag doing it, but for the most part, I mean, like you can, you can have a side business or a side hustle to help you better prepare if you decide to get out. And uh, that was one of the things that I did, which is, you know, leads me into why I'm still in the Marine Corps because I love having some continuity. Uh, there's some deeper reasons, some deep personal reasons that I'll, I'll talk about eventually, but uh, this is kind of like the introductory kind of wave top sort of why I'm still in the Marine Corps, why I uh, joined the uh, why I joined boot camp. I mean, that pretty much, or why I joined the Marine Corps, uh, that pretty much summed up that. But for the most part, like there's, there's other reasons. Like, uh, one of them had to do with my buddy, um, passing away. And again, I'll talk about that another time, but, uh, keeping continuity with the Marine Corps, um, it's provided a lot of networking, a lot of, uh, opportunities that I wouldn't have had elsewhere. And, uh, I think that's one of the most powerful things about it. And I, and I want to keep that as close as possible and transitioning off active duty into the reserves has allowed me to do that because I did four years. I served four years, active duty, dedicated four years, nothing but Marine Corps BS. It's not all BS, but you get what I'm saying. Nothing but Marine Corps focus work. And then I transitioned off and, uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm in the reserves. So I keep good continuity with the Marine Corps. I'm able to do a lot of stuff but I'm also able to have my own business and work my own schedule. Um, so it's, a, it's great. And that's why I've been in for 10 years. That's why I continue to do it because it's a great opportunity and health care. Health care is amazing. Actually. It's like 300 bucks for dental and full health care. Try care for, uh, y your family, for your whole family. And so that's freaking awesome as well. And those are just my honest reasons why I'm still here, <laughs> why I'm still in the Marine Corps. Um, 
And I, I mean, there is nothing like putting on that uniform. And for the people that have put on the uniform and have had to take it off, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, there's, there's something to it, um, and you miss it. And so uh, it's nice because I, I get enough time to miss it, and then I go back and we go to the field, we go to whatever op or anything like that, and it's just, uh, it's not, it's not terrible. It's not a terrible experience. It's actually pretty awesome. Uh, there are some times where I'm like, oh man, am I really gonna keep doing this? But for the most part, it's pretty awesome. But yeah, that's uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So uh, if y'all like these videos, please like and subscribe. Uh, this is a little more personal, so uh, this is new to me, but I appreciate y'all being here and listening to me talk. So take care.